What's your earliest memory? Because I think mine, or one of mine, is lying in bed looking up at the wall and there's a poster that features a whole bunch of animals. A bit like this. But there was one animal that I kept coming back to all the time. The penguin. Because, you know, I just did not know what I was looking at. I'm a young kid and I'm like, you know, there's, there's actually two penguins here. One on the left and one on the right. But as a kid, I couldn't see them because I was too busy looking at that white space in the middle. Right? I was too busy looking at something called the negative space. So negative space is everything except the thing you're looking at. Okay? It's the stuff that's like all around. All right? So I've got an example. If I come and stand here, maybe like that. There you go. So if you're looking at me, the negative space is all this white stuff around here, under there. So it's like the stuff you normally wouldn't pay any attention to. Right, but if there's one thing I want you to take away tonight, it's this. It's worth looking in the negative space. That's me talking. <laughs> okay, so the story with the penguins, that's me as a kid, right? But let's fast forward a little bit to me as a teenager, right? Because when I was a teenager, I discovered comic books. Okay? I loved comic books, still kind of love comic books, and blam. And I read like a lot of them, right? But there was one guy's work, a guy called Frank Miller, who, man, I just loved his stuff so much. So you might have heard of him. He's come up with uh, a comic called Sin City, which, um, you know, was clearly a very appropriate thing for a 13-year-old like me to be reading, um, as evidenced by this sequence of a hitman blowing the head off a Catholic priest. But I really did like the way he used negative space. Like, I found it so engaging. Like, the next guy coming up, right? This is another piece by Frank Miller. Have a look at this guy's ear, okay? Because all we've got to go on visually is a single white line, right? But still, we know it's an ear. What's going on? It's like our imagination can start to fill in the blanks. It's like we start to see things in the negative space. Yeah, I heard some woos. Okay, so then I went off, I finished school, and I went off to uni, and I started studying graphic design. And there was this one logo design that I discovered, and it changed my relationship with negative space forever. Okay? It's this one. Not that one. Or that one. It's that one. Have a look at the negative space between the E and the X. Is that an arrow? Oh boy, when I saw that, I was just like, wow, there's like a hidden meaning in this logo and I've just discovered it. It's like I'd looked into the negative space and I'd been rewarded for it. I'd looked in the negative space and I'd found something new, right? Now, finding something new, that's really special and important to me because that's kind of my job these days, right? Because, you know, I finished uni, I actually kind of grew up and now I have to go to work. Um, like that. So I work in an advertising agency and it's my job to come up with original creative ideas. Some would say brilliant. Original creative ideas. <laughs> I'm basically trying to find something new. But have you ever tried to do it? It's quite hard. I mean, that's why I get paid so much money. Anyway, this is um, my calendar from Monday. And I don't know what your days are like, but mine are kind of broken up into chunks, right? Like these white chunks here. So the first chunk, there's probably someone coming and saying, hey, you've got two hours to come up with a brilliant creative idea. And the next one, that's probably the two hours that I have to come up with a brilliant creative idea. And then the third one, that's the person coming back wanting me to explain my idea. And the one after that, that's me trying to come up with a new idea because no one liked the first one. And it sort of goes on like that, right? Because coming up with an original creative idea is hard, okay? But what if we look at my calendar and we look at the negative space, okay? Look at the time that no one else normally pays attention to. So my shower in the morning, don't look too closely at that one. My commute to work, lunch, um, lying in bed at night. Because it's weird, I, you know, I'm not officially working at that time, but that is the time I've noticed that I have my best ideas, right? It's, it's really weird. It's like the negative space is hiding all this creative gold and I've just got to find it. So, now you're thinking, all right, let's just hop in the shower and wait for inspiration to strike. But it doesn't quite work like that. If you want to be inspired, you've got to go and find inspiration. Okay, so I've got, I've got an example. Um, what if you're trying to come up with an idea for a new website? Okay, a brand new website. I guess you could go and look at all the websites that are out there. Right? And you know, you'd probably see some really nice ones and stuff. But if you do that, would you really be inspired to create something new? So if you want to create something new, you're going to have to look in the negative space. You're going to have to look outside because, you know, there's a whole world of stuff out there that's not a website. So imagine what sort of thing you could create if you're looking out there for your inspiration. 
Because if you always look in the same place, you're never going to find anything new. So let me challenge you to start looking in the negative space of the world around you. Because that's how you're going to create something you've never created before. And that's where you're going to find something new. Thanks.